So we're fresh from, uh, we had a, a Metaverse breakfast this morning at 7.30, um, which was early for, especially for East Coast people that came in yesterday. But um, there was a lot of passion and a lot of, a lot of energy around it. Also a lot of misunderstanding and a lot of confusion about what we're talking about. Um, can you, you know, you were one of the first executives to actually say the Metaverse is gonna be the next version of the internet. Um, but why don't we just go through like what, how you see the versions of the internet and then we'll talk about how the Metaverse can play into that. Sure, so um, as you know, not that long ago, I ventured out and tried to put a definition on the word metaverse because despite the many times it's been written about, there's just a staggering amount of hyperbole out there. Um, it's being used to describe almost anything and everything. And, and I thought it deserved at least someone attempting to define it. Now, I know others have, but um, I started by saying it's the, the next generation of the internet. And, if, if I think about at least my time in this space, I can remember picking up Mosaic at a small computer shop, installing it on my computer, and getting out there and, and looking for things on the internet. And it was mostly text. Um, government um, institutions, um, universities, some commercial enterprises, technology companies had libraries, and you could get things like a, you know, a, a, a a plug-in for your printer, but that was pretty much all that was out there. And so it was text, a little bit of photos, but I would argue that was a primitive but early first version of the internet. This last you know, period of time, you know, the second version of the internet, uh, we've been buried in video, um, we've been buried in sort of complex applications like Uber that bounces off a satellite and a cell tower to tell you where you are, where your car is, and connect the services. But these are applications that are assembling data essentially for you to view um, on your mobile phone or to view on your computer. And what I was trying to set out was that the next version of the internet, internet 3.0 if you will, not to be confused with web 3.0, but internet 3.0, um, was about these applications becoming vastly more immersive because they become real time. And real time, for those of you who are not familiar with it, a video game is real time, and I'm not saying that the next version of the internet is video games. I'm saying that real time is when that next screen that you see, that animation you see, the information you see, was conjured up, maybe never seen by another human alive, in that instant on the basis of contextual information that knows who you are, where you are, what you're looking for, and your input, perhaps input of others in a social or connected way, um, and so, like a video game, that next scene is created by you in response to your input. It is a vastly more immersive version of the world than in digital world that we experience today. And it's happening all around us as we speak. And it, what's interesting, we, we were talking in the prep call and you were trying to describe this, this uh, immersiveness. The fact that it's real time, and it's also unscripted. So the, the, the text internet was programmed, the video programming that were blasted, you know, and we consume on TikTok, we're being, it's being shown to us. It's all programmed, it's all defined either by an algorithm mm -hmm. or a person, but the metaverse, the way you describe it, is gonna be created in real time and unscripted and possibly not controlled by Facebook or Netflix or, or TikTok. Um, well, it's, the it, governance questions are another, another thing altogether, but. You know, we have customers now that use Unity to build their version of the metaphors. One of them would be an airport. They've got a complete model, there's a number of them, they've got complete models of the airport, they can see everything. They take data off their IoT stuff, whether it's security or people passing checkpoints, et cetera. They know when every, where everyone is, they know when the planes are coming. They can run in parallel a simulation to say, if I put this plane over here or I do something with my with the information that's surrounding this particular problem, I can manage that better. I can see it in real time, and I can run scenarios and see those in real time. And the benefit of that is pretty enormous. I mean, how many of us have been lost in time in an airport because they don't get this right? Um, but it's so many other things. We have high-end customers now in the fashion world that want to um, have photorealistic versions of a try-on, a virtual try-on. They can bring their high-end luxury boutique to your living room, and you can be sitting on, in your chair um, with your shoes on, but the suit that you're interested in, or the dress, or the, with the purse, or the accessory, and then that's only you see that. It's made for you, and the level of engagement people have. Now, video games have been doing things like this for a while, but the level of engagement, the level of information imparted, 
um, it is transformative in terms of the way people will spend time in, with their digital tools. I think the other thing that uh, that I, I think we should appreciate is that you know this is this is a relatively uh, well, let's say mature audience, but there's a generation of kids that have grown up with this these, these tools. They've spent hours and hours on Minecraft and Roblox. They're going to expect to have those experiences in their pro in their professional life. Of course, going and, forward. And and, and not a, not everyone will remember you know 1992 and and Neil Stevenson coining the term, but in that book they they showed a. a a protagonist, hero protagonist, aptly named. On the nose. And Hero, H-I-R-O, he, he lived a life delivering pizza, living in a trucking container. But in the digital world, he was, you know, a very high-ranking, important individual, lived a parallel life. Now, for those of you that play these persistent worlds or these gaming worlds, you understand what I'm talking about. Maybe it's your kids. But people have met and gotten married in a video game because their life and experience in that, you know, it's happened in Ultima Online, it's happened in World of Warcraft. They, they really do form bonding relationships that are important to them. And, you know, if your kids are playing Roblox, they've got dozens of friends they're interacting with. They, they may know their real names, they may not know their real names, but they are durable friendships. And that, that relationships can take place in these spaces. And if, you shop at a particular store on a regular basis, you might do that digitally, you might know the shopkeeper. They're certainly providing you what you're looking for in that moment, and it is a much richer experience than you'll get any other way. So I'm, I'm certain this is happening. I've got literally thousands of customers building these things now. So one of the other I said, misconceptions, um, we could talk about a lot of them, is this is 10 years from now or 20 years from now. It is literally happening now. This is not something that is, you know, we have to wait five or 10 years for. But then other misconceptions, it's not dependent on an AR or VR device. And I've seen lots of these experiences work perfectly fine on your phones and work perfectly fine on tablets and PCs. And other misconceptions like, you know, Facebook presents or Meta presents, you know, Horizon Worlds, which is a, conception of what the metaverse might be, by the way, built in Unity, which I'm happy to say, but that, that's a bunch of people wandering around in a space. I don't know if that's the execution that's gonna catch fire, um, but again, it's happening now, and there's going to be misfires, and I, I wouldn't call that a misfire, time will tell what they do with it, but there's gonna be a lot of misfires, but there's gonna be a lot of great things that happen. One of the things that came up this morning is that building a metaverse isn't the end of the game, so to speak. Like you need to give users something to do in these spaces. There needs to be some thought into as to what they're trying to accomplish. Roblox and Minecraft do that very well. A lot of games do it well. Um, what what do you see as the things people are going to do in the metaverse? Consume? Okay, so this is one you, you and I were talking about yeah. this morning. But this is a really important question. We we at Unity get literally three to four major corporations per day showing up on our doorstep saying, I want to be in the metaverse. I have this picture you know, of this 3D real-time world. And they kind of want to put their brand there so you can like walk around it and look at it. And you know, I don't think anybody out there wants to go to a, a Coca-Cola website and look at the Coke. I, I think it's just because it's 3D or it's on a new kind of device, it's not going to solve for anything. Uh, what, I, what we counsel our customers to try to do is give them something meaningful to do. Video games do that already. Maybe it's a digital try-on. Maybe it's managing your factory better. Maybe it's running the airport better. Maybe it's a, a model around air traffic control. But there's thousands of things, literally millions, and I believe most of the internet, most of the websites are going to be real-time 3D. They're going to be metaverse-type destinations. Most entertainment, you had Jeffrey up here a little a moment ago. One of the big debates that people are having in Hollywood is what's the future of film? These things can now be interactive with you and personal to you. And those are dramatically different experiences than we have today. And people are making them now. And my sense is that they all, all the ones that are going to prevail are not going to be how do I put my brand or my company in the metaverse. It's what problem do I solve for my customer by giving them a real-time application? What do I connect better with that customer or that partner or that employee or that person that I'm trying to have a relationship? What's better? Again, if I were to pick on some of these things, right now I've got Zoom. I can look at a, you guys, pretty photorealistic, and we can see each other. Why does my avatar want to talk to your avatar in a business meeting? I mean, do I really want to watch my avatar talking to your avatar? The, by the way, some people do, so I'm just pointing out that not everyone does. Um, and 
I'm not sure it's solving a problem. Solving real problems where most technology applications find success, and solving fake problems is where most technology companies go down a path where it seemed cool to the founder but not particularly useful to any of their customers. There's also an obsession with sort of the consumer side of it in avatars and whether they're realistic, whether they have legs or not. The legs question <laughs> in particular, I know you have opinions on. Well, look, I, I think there's a lot of applications where avatars are going to be great. If you want to experience life, like we've got an application we've shown, you can find you know, Unity uh, Metacast out there where you can you can essentially be in the body of a UFC fighter and go through that fight. By the way, it's frightening, it's, it's sort of a Surgeon General's warning here. If you take a look at this, you get hit in the face, it feels more real than you'd like it to. Um, but it's a new way to consume sports. And I think you, you want an avatar in a, if you're experiencing a sport this way because you are embodying that character. Pull the camera back, do I really want to look over my avatar's shoulder at the event? I don't think so. I'm me enough to not need a version of me animated in front of me. If what I'm doing is um, where there's utility to this, so like I'm doing a digital try-on. It is very easy, frightening. You've got lighter on your phones if you're iPhone 13 and above or similar with Android. You can scan your body millimeter accurate and, they can, and the, the makers of high-end apparel are gonna dress you, you'll see how it drapes. And you don't have to stand there and try 20 things on. You can do it from a distance. And that'll improve an experience where you're solving a real problem. And, but there, you absolutely need an avatar. I don't know what I need an avatar for to buy a book or what I need an avatar for to, to, to see how a computer works and see it from different angles. I'm not even sure I need an avatar to watch a movie, although if I'm cast in the, in the character of, of one of the, the principles, perhaps I would. My point is, is it, it's gotten confused with avatars. It's not about avatars. Avatars are useful in some circumstances. Yeah, and I think, I think you know, and part, part of what Meta's done by having these demos and having these presentations is sort of make that the focus, and then everybody's like, well, I don't need that. But that is not necessarily what the potential of the metaverse is. Yeah, I mean, look, there's a lot of different ways, and, and obviously Meta is one of the most successful technology companies in the history of time. A lot of ways to do these things. I think generally when we're getting to these massive transition points, we're better off getting a li little bit less fantastic with our terminology and, and, and show proof points for things that work and let people's imagination go with that. I, I think we're, we're definitely gonna find ourselves in a metaverse swoon if we're not already in one, where broader press is gonna say, well, that didn't happen, um, because the most misguided visions won't happen. Um, but the things that are happening are gonna be massively transformational for our lives um, build huge companies out of it, hopefully our, allow ours to join those huge companies with, with success in providing the technology for many of these things. But I, I think it's inevitable that it is happening. The, the fact that things are gonna go from non-real time to real time, I mean, the benefits are enormous. Just managing a factory. Why don't I look at my factory you know, from yesterday or last year when you know, look at a visual when I can look at exactly how the gears are, 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 are wearing out or how much oil is flowing through a pipe or you know, what, what, what is happening on a particular part of the factory floor that's causing you know, inefficiency or I can do a simulation and say, if I move this around, is it gonna be more? Why wouldn't we want those tools? And, Companies are going to embrace this because it makes them more effective with their customers. It's going to save them money. I get the question from investors all the time. Are people holding back um, because, you know, in this recessionary time? The answer is no one is holding back on trying to figure out how to save money. So real problems, real solutions, it's happening now. Um, I mean, look, the iPhone is what, you know, not that old now, 2010? 2007. 27, yeah, so 15, 18 years old. We're, we're talking about, you know, the, so much is transformed. This next thing is gonna be similarly transformative and we're all gonna experience it together. Yeah, and it wasn't a particularly great phone when it came out. It had a lot of problems, it was locked into AT&T. Look, I used a Blackberry for three years, so, um, but then I switched. So what, uh, as we end, what, what, are you, what, is, what is the metaverse gonna look like in five years, in 10 years? What are you most excited about? You know, what I'm most excited about, I think, a um, couple of things. I, I see the pieces of technology where I go through a day now often on Zoom and I'm exhausted. Something about sort of the, 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 the technology of, of video conferencing seems to suck my soul out after you know, so many hours <laughs> that's of a doing pretty it. Common Eric, we love you, I, I, that's not a criticism of your company. 
Um, but I believe I've already seen this in bits and pieces where you and I could be thousands of miles apart, another person could be right here with me, and the three of us can feel like we're together and there's no barriers to that. It feels intimate, it feels real. We could perhaps both be drinking a glass of wine and it's not soul draining. I think that's one. Um, that is one of the ones I'm most excited about. But I can give you hundreds more, but I see our clock is sort mm -hmm. of tapped. Well, you know what, next year it's economy. We should have some of those demos in the, uh, in the break room. We can so certainly do that. actually experience. John, thanks hey, so much thanks for having, having me. Us. Thank you.